Dropping. Dropping gobs of Eldrazi. Versus Robert Meadows and his new favorite deck, Bring to Light Scape Shift. Has Meadows been playing this one? Because he top four an IQ, didn't he? Yeah, with this deck, I think. <laughs> this guy, I mean, sometimes people win at Magic, and I'm just like, is it just because they're playing tons of Magic? But this guy's top four in some like, serious tournaments with some very questionable decks. Bring to Light Scape Shift is not questionable. It's fine. Is <sighs> It's the worst of the Scapeshift decks, but I think Scapeshift is a really good deck. Sure. He top forward something with Narnum Renegades in his deck, <laughs> like. Yeah. I mean that. He top eight it, I think. I don't think he, he might have top four. Well, whatever. I mean, one one a match at a whatever. competitive event <laughs> with flipping Narnum Renegade. Narnum Renegades. Renegaden. So. Renegaden. Ninja Gaiden. Dominaria this weekend. We're going to be streaming that on Top Deck Productions. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what who's... Is this? I is... think... Are we frozen? Do we freeze yep. up? Nope. We're going to yep. reload it. Here ah, we go. Alright, so... Um... So yeah, Dominaria pre-release this weekend. I'm excited. Me too. How much you playing? Unknown. Alright. Maybe all of it. Maybe like two. I'm gonna play at least. We're in on the two at a giant, right? I was oh. hoping I could get Robert Meadows to be my two at a giant partner. He posted something on Facebook. Are you serious? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, obviously we're two at a gianting. Oh, I didn't know if you actually wanted to play the two at a giant tournament. I didn't know if you wanted to skip it. I mean, it's whatever. It's like a little fun thing. Yeah, um, so I'll probably play at least three, maybe four. Okay. Um, then both Saturdays and, and then at least noon on Sunday. So I don't think, if I'm not playing all of them, I don't think I'm playing four. Right. I'll probably only play one on Sunday. So both on Saturday and one on Sunday. Unless I play all of them, in which case I'll play all of them. Right. Yeah, so that'll be entertaining. Look forward to it. What is... I'm so confused. So what's on the horizon for us? We've got a lot of playtesting to do. Yeah, we're going to play... Hopefully hopefully get some serious uh, drafts in. Yeah, we need to get some serious drafts. Um, we're going to be going somewhat deep on moto drafts. Yeah, you tell me on moto drafts. Um, tell you what? Like, like just how, I, how deep you, you want to go? All the way. Oh, you want to do like three a day? No. I, I mean, I work eight hours a day. Like, you can't... You can't work eight hours a day, play magic eight hours a day, sleep eight hours a day. No. Oh, no, baby. No. Oh, what is you doing? What is you doing? <laughs> um... I'll yeah. probably put in forty hours of magic a week, but it won't be like it'll eight be hours twenty four on the weekends, and then sixteen throughout the week. Yeah, something like that. Okay, maybe a little more during the week. I'm just saying, twenty four on the weekends is like easily doable. Yeah. Um. And I think you can. This is this is another topic I've wanted to discuss on the show. Maybe is. So, so for those of you not in the know, we're practicing all this one because we're. I'm going to the Pro Tour. Yeah, John Douglas is a pro qualified future for, Pro Tour competitor. John qualified Douglas. for Pro Tour Dominaria. So I need to get in on Standard. Standard. We're gonna go deep on Standard. We're gonna go deep on Draft. We're just gonna win this thing. Yeah, I think you could. They're gonna write a ballot about me. I think. The Ballad of Handsome John Douglas. Right? It'll be sung in Klingon exclusively. Why? Why have Klingon? you have you heard a Klingon battle ballad? No, why would I have heard a Klingon battle ballad? <laughs> um, Who are you talking to right now? They're like super impressive. Oh, are they? It's like um it's like listening to somebody speak German, but it's got a better flow to it, whereas German has like a lot of extra consonants. Okay. 
Klingon words are like one consonant with like a lot of vowel afterwards. Like the home world is Konos. Okay. Their god is Kales. It's a lot that that like long sound at the end of the word. So like when you when you sing it. I see. So I'm gonna commission somebody to write a rock opera about me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what we're gonna spend the prize money on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you gonna what are you gonna spend all that prize money on? Oh, I'm gonna uh, commission a rock opera to be written, <laughs> written about a me. rock opera to be written about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> have you heard this band Greta Van Fleet? No. They uh, they're and if anybody likes rock music, look them up. Like they're fantastic. Um, you should commission those guys. The guy's an awesome voice. Okay. Um, so I think here's here's what I think. I think that like playing a lot of magic is is good, obviously. Right. But I think what you do when you're not playing magic, like evaluating the outcomes of the games you've played, right, is um equally it, important. No, if not more important in where we are in our magic careers. Like we've both played magic for a long, long time. Right. And so. Um, and we've been playing a lot of Magic leading up to this. Correct. And so I think our mechanics are really solid. Okay. And the way we think about things is really solid. So I think, like, instead of just jamming a, a, a matchup a hundred times, jamming it 20 times thinking about it, 20 more times thinking about it, and 20 more times is way better. So you've only gotten 60 games in, but, like, you've thought about it. And uh, I think that's way more important than uh, than just getting the, the muscle memory down. Right. And, I mean, I'd, you definitely need to get the muscle memory down, too. Yeah, I just think that that's, like, a much lower bar. Right. Uh, just understanding where to think. Like, that is going to come from playing the games. Right. But yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, so yeah, like when, when you say spend 40 hours, uh, not all 40 of those hours have to be like actively playing the games. Right. Um, I think reading articles, bouncing ideas off of people that you respect as thinkers. Um, I know important. a lot of stinkers, not a lot of thinkers. Sure. Stinkers. That's reasonable. Got him. You did. You you really, you really got him there. Good job. Proud of you. The proverbial him. Uh, Justin Gobbing takes the first game, in dramatic fashion. Was it dramatic? Oh, it was. Both of these guys wearing beanies in the middle of April. Well, it's like thirty degrees out, so middle of April's a. Mm. It's warmer than that out. Is it? Right now? It was 40 when the sun was up. Oh, really? Yeah. It was like 20 in my office. <laughs> I, I walked to my car and back with a t-shirt on. It felt great today. Yeah? Okay. I mean, my parking lot, the salon is huge, so. Yeah, I went out back last night in the middle of the night naked to Hell of the Moon, and it was pretty cold. Yeah? There's a lot of shrinkage. You and Ozzy? No, just me. Just, just alone. We live in a nice, we have a nice wooded backyard. Perfect for Howling at the Moon. Perfect for, I mean, the leaves qu aren't quite on the trees yet, so you can really, the moonlight can come through and hit your pale skin. <laughs> There's not a lot of pale skin that's visible through the, the tufts of hair. <laughs> Can't even, can't even follow that up. Um, so pre-release is going to be the first foray into Dominaria, and then I'm we, excited. And then the weekend after that, we've got Grand Prix Columbus, which is team sealed. Yeah, me, you, and Jack Grannon. Is he on the hook? Jack Grannon is on the hook. We have Jack Grannon on the hook. We need um, to get him out to do some. Uh, at least one build. I want six builds. Every build. <laughs> Holy crap. No, I 
I'm thinking like three would be ideal. Yeah, you could do three in a night. Yeah. Maybe. I want like two in a night and then like talk about it for a couple days and then like one more. Yeah. Hit that Friday up. Yeah. Hit that Friday up. Gotta gotta get that. Maybe before we go see Avengers. Oh, is that what we're doing that Friday? Or that Thursday. We're gonna do a practice build and then see Avengers? Yeah. Alright. Um, what better way to get hype than to watch the Mad Titan wreck some shit? Yeah, I got to, uh, I gotta get on, like, a Wikipedia so I can familiarize myself with this part of the storyline. No, you need to pick up the Infinity War graphic novel. Oh, man, how long is that going to take me to read? Not long. It's it's a comic. I'm already trying to, like, plow through this this novel that's pretty... It's the it's not dense, but, like, the way the guy writes is just really... So I've read this, like, in comic form and then again in graphic novel form many times. So do you have... Do you own it? No. Uh, but I'll, like, go somewhere and they'll have it, and I'll, like, sit down and read through it again in, like, an hour. Oh, okay. It's just like a, a bigger comic book. All right. I'll have to go to a comic book shop. I'm sure they all have it. I don't know. If it's not, I mean, if they're not sold out. Right. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's great. Uh-huh. If you like watching uh, Thanos get cucked around by Mephisto, which happens a little bit. Yeah, don't, uh, don't know who either of those people are. I know Thanos is the gold guy that's been in a number of memes. Yes. Uh, Mephisto is literal devil. He's just the devil. Just actual Satan. Like, a very cartoonish-looking devil with, like, the curly mustache and, like... Oh, sure. Yeah, just very, very cartoony. Okay. And then there's Death, who is Lady Death. Oh, she's a lady. She's a lady. Like, Thanos is courting her. Thanos is in love with Death. And this whole thing is just to try to impress her. (laughs) This is just, like... This sounds like a... Like, somebody took it too literally when they were like, oh, let's make an allegory. <laughs> so he's, like, trying to impress and she won't talk to him. And it's, like, driving him crazy. He's in love with her. And so he's like, you know what I'll do? I'll kill half of the life in the universe for you. And then, like, goes off and tries to get, like, these powerful artifacts or whatever. Okay. And then, like, succeeds in getting them. Succeeds in killing half of the life in the universe. Right. Still doesn't talk to him. Oh, man. So, so he has he... to kill the entire universe, it's just him and her? No. In nothingness? So then he gets, like, really indignant. Like, when the the nice guys, like, get turned down, it's like, oh, she's a bitch anyway. Oh, God. He gets all like that and creates a female kind of clone of himself that's, like, obsessed with him. It... It gets really, really weird in the comics. It's really fun to read. Uh, does he wear a fedora ever? He does not. Would he if he were a 2015 man representing Thanos? He should. He should. He's total, total gentleman. He was. He was very nice guyish. Yeah. For part of that. Sure. Like when he was starting to go mad. Uh, Green X looks strong with Dominaria and Standard. Uh, I agree. Uh, There's a lot of green shells. Um, So the... (laughs) This is like flipping Mario Kart up in here. Exactly. Green shells everywhere. One red shell, but lots of green shells bouncing around up here. Um there's this Lanor elves into like Ronus, Jade Light Ranger, Thrashing Brontodon shell that could be very good. Wayward but... Sword Tooth. No. Yes. No. Absolutely. No. No. Uh, you, that could be I, very good. I don't think you understand. Oh, I. I guess I don't. But anyway, I think Wayward Sword Tooth is in that deck. I think you're a Mad Titan. I'm a maniac. You are a maniac. But anyway, um, I think there's, like, green tokens builds. I think there's, sure. like, these 
snake decks, I think, are getting a bump. Yep. Tinker. And uh, those aren't going to be the same as any of the other decks. Ooh, I just caught a chill. So you just had a seizure. Little, little, just a chill right up my spine. Just a minor seizure. <laughs> you smell toast? I know you were smelling syrup earlier. I was smelling syrup any, earlier. You smell any I'm wondering if, food? so like, if, so people who experience ASMR talk about a tingling, and I'm wondering if that's what my chills are like, because when I get a chill, I get a tingling all over my body. Have you ever seen one of those, like, head scratchers where it's, like, all the little tiny things? Yeah, and it goes over your scalp? Yeah. So doing that is what ASMR feels like. Like, that's the tingle. Oh. Okay. I've never had that then. I'm not an ASMR person then. No. No, indeed. Do, if, do we have any ASMRs out in the world? I'm following, like, watching the stream right now? If you want to get really, really ridiculously out of breath from laughing. <laughs> what were we watching over the ASMR? We put ASMR we're, in the background. We were watching Overwatch, and you guys turned the sound off on the Overwatch and then played <laughs> ASMR. We turned it down. We didn't turn it off. Uh, but yes, it was very good. Like, whenever there's, like, a lull in the conversation, you just hear, like... <laughs> You're just, like... <laughs> That's the way Twitch should be watched. <laughs> yeah. Hat Crab Zombie, make a note. Yeah, I did not know we had a Twitch worker... I guess the guy works for Twitch. Is that what the what the deal is? I don't know, dude. What's your deal? The spider monkey was telling us about it. I don't know if they just send people around to monitor us. I mean, we we can't even be in like the top ten magic streams right now, are we? I don't know. You're on a few watch lists though. <laughs> Southern Poverty Law Center. <laughs> Oh, apparently Robert won game one, and we just had it up there wrong for, like, the five seconds that I was paying attention to the match. That's all right. Looks like Robert's about to about to do something. He's shuffling his deck with a bunch of lands tapped, which usually means... Escape a shift to... Oh, I was going to say bring the light happened. Uh, I mean, it's escape shift is incoming. But he only has six lands. Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, unknown what's going on. Yeah, so I think uh, looking at various Lana or Elf uh, configurations mm -hmm. is going to be super worthwhile. So, I disagree wholeheartedly. Just for the sake of disagreement this time. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, to play Lana or Elf... You're going to 100% build your mana base around Land or Elf. Right. So you have to need, what, 15 green sources? Yeah. 15, 14, 15. Um, if you're playing allied colors, those have to be swamps. Or they have to be forest, sorry, or hash up oases. Right. If you're playing enemy colors, you get to dabble into these fast lands. Yep. Which I th think is good. Yep. For playing uh, certain color combinations. Yep. Especially since the one drops in this format. In like Legion's Landing. Llanowar Elves. And then on the flip side. If people are playing that. You need to play Fatal Pushes. And Shocks. Like that first turn land coming into play untapped. Is going to be a big deal. Yeah. And I think you have to take into consideration. That your Llanowar Elf is getting shocked. Like I'm ready to put. Two magma sprays in the red deck. It should be in there already. No, I did. I I'm not a fan of magma spray. I've like died too many times with it in my hand. Where like I was like, man, I wish I could fire this at them. Well, that just means you played poorly. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, if you're not gonna magma spray their dudes, it's like buying extra draw steps. Sure. And the utility of exiling their creatures is important. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to go up to four shocks, two magma sprays. 
Yeah, I think that's Or do you a... think do you want to be on three and three? Depends on the rest of the deck and like how aggressive you are versus how big you are. Like the bigger you are, the better Magma Spray is. Mm-hmm. I think I want to be on four shock to Magma Spray because I'm going to play Oh, Robert Meadows won the second game. Okay, that's it. Bye. No, just kidding. Um Come back Wednesday for standard action, Thursday for more modern action, Friday modern action, Saturday pre release, Sunday pre release. Friday pre release. Friday pre release. You won't hear us. Monday pre release. Uh I guess on Magic Online maybe. Who knows? You won't hear us ever again. I don't know ever again. <laughs> we're not we're not closing the door on it, but we're just we're not locking the door behind us. We are closing the door for this chapter though. We're we're taking a step back. Um it's very timely because we're going to be doing a lot of testing. Yes. This was decided before John Douglas became Pro Tour competitor. Yes, but once John Douglas became future Pro Tour competitor, John it Douglas, really locked in. <laughs> it locked in. So, um, check back in. Keep checking in. You might find us on Tuesday again. Um, I think there's, hopefully they're, they're hunting a replacement team for us too. So yeah, somebody will be here for you guys. And, uh, definitely follow on Facebook because I'm sure if yeah. we come back or we do like a PPTQ or just something. Yeah, like a guest spot. Yeah. That's where you're going to find us. That's yeah. Where that's when you'll be able to, to know. When the affable Taylor Gun and the handsome John Douglas can come back into your life. Which I know you are all dying for that to happen. Or you will be. Every day. Until that time comes. Smell you later, nerd.